Good evening to you for the penultimate time in this series. Yes, I know that normally we last for 13 weeks. This time, for reasons known to someone, we end after 11. So, quickly to our muttons, not to lose a precious squeezed-up moment. Take your liquid in hand, put your feet up, and allow me to raise my glass of jaggers and taggers to you as we say one to another. Thanks for the memory. <laughs> again from the square chair. The Friday Club is in session and at your suggestion, Michael Thomas in South Croydon, Surrey, we invite the outsized bonhomie of Harry Richmond to open the agenda with the classic words of Dorothy Fields set to music by Jimmy McHugh. Go round your coat and get your hat Leave your worries on the doorstep and just direct your feet on the sunny side of the street and you hear that bitter path that little happy tune is your step life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street why should you walk in the shade with those blues on parade don't be afraid, be a rover and walk over. And if you haven't got a fan, you'll be as rich as Rockefeller with gold dust at your feet on the sunny side of the street. Grab your coat, get that old derby hat. Leave all your worries laying right on your doorstep. Left, right, left, direct your feet on the sunny side of the street. Listen, can't you hear that little bitter pass? Oh, that happy tune, that should be your step. Cause life can be oh so sweet on the sunny side of the street. Why should you walk in the shade with old blues on parade? Come on, folks, don't be afraid. Be a little rover and walk over. And if you haven't got a cent, what of it? My laugh, you're as rich as Rockefeller with gold dust at your feet. On the sunny side of the street. Harry Richmond, rousing the night owl with a day song. Thank you more than I can say for letters, emails, and a simple postcard. A beautiful one from you, Betty Beale, Margaret and David Airy in Coldingham, Stirlingshire, Robert J. McFarlane in Creef. Here's a favourite lady of mine, and of yours, judging by letters and whatnot. Picture a smashing fair lady at the keyboard. In the yesterday sense of the word, this is no player at a stand-up, can't really do it instrument that should be ashamed of the name. A grand piano, and a grand piano style she has, and there too a beautiful taste in songs. Take this we Rogers and Hart throw away. Only Larry Hart could have cooked up such a lyric. I've got five dollars, 85 relations, two lace combinations, they belong to you. Two coats with collars, my and grandma wore them. Dorum, they belong to you. I've got two lips that care for mating, therefore waiting will not do. Take my five dollars, take my coats and collars, take my heart that hollers. 
everything I've got belongs to you. I've got two lips that care for mating, therefore waiting will not do. Take my five dollars, take my coats and collars, take my heart that hollers. Gorgeous Jerry Southern at the piano and singing Rogers and Hart. I've mentioned before that I saw Sophie Tucker first on a cinema stage in Lewisham as an additional attraction to a talkie in days before they trusted the talkie to hold us for an evening. She was less known then, singing with Ted Shapiro at the piano. Here she is already a full-blown mama, so to speak, with full orchestra. We know well the Oh Mr. Paganini song, you know, don't be a meanie and swing it and all that. Miss Tucker makes it Mr. Toscanini and sets him not in Carnegie Hall, but in the Albert Hall, presumably recording the song in London. The concert was over in Albert Hall. The maestro took bow after bow. He said, my dear friend, I have given my all. I'm sorry. It's all over now. When from the gallery, way up high, there suddenly came this mournful cry. Mr. Toscanini, please play my rhapsody. And if you cannot play it, won't you sing it? And if you can't sing it, you've simply got to swing it. I said swing it. I mean swing it. Ding dong, ding it. Oh, Mr. Tuscanini, we breathlessly await your masterful baton. Go on and sling it. And if you can sing it, you've simply got to swing it. I said swing it. Heidi, hi. Heidi, hey. We've heard your repertoire. And at the final bar, we greet you with wild applause. But what a great ovation. Your interpretation of wah, 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 wood call. Mr. Toscanini, please don't be a meanie. What to have you up your sleeve. Come on and spring it. And if you can't spring it, you've simply got to swing it. Swing it. Sophie Tucker rearranging lyrics for our British benefit. Poopy. No, I'm not referring to a taken draft of Jaggers and Taggers. It's the title of our next item. I couldn't resist looking it up in the Oxford Dictionary. It's an enlightening entry. The word whoop, meaning a shout expressing excitement, etc. I like etc. It opens the word up. Goes back to 1568. Shakespeare used it. Whoop. Jug, I love thee. Isn't that marvellous? The American use of the word whoopee, it seems, goes back to 1825. To make whoopee, according to Oxford, means to have a good time or go on the razzle-dazzle. It's very English. Eddie Cantor, I think, took it a little further. Another bride, another June, another sunny honeymoon. Another season, another reason for making whoopee. A lot of shoes, a lot of rice. The groom is nervous, he answers twice. It's really killing that he's so willing to make whoopee. Picture a little love nest. Down where the roses cling Picture the 
same sweet love nest. Think what a year can bring. He's washing dishes and baby clothes. He's so ambitious, he even sews. But don't forget, folks, that's what you get, folks, for making Whoopi. Another year, or maybe less. What's this I hear? Well, can't you guess? She feels neglected, and he's suspected of making Whoopi. She sits alone, goes every night. He doesn't phone, or even write. He says he's busy, but she says, is he? He's making Whoopi. He doesn't make much money. Five thousand dollars per. Some judge who thinks he's funny says you pay six to her. He says, now judge, suppose I fail. The judge says, but right into jail. You'd better keep her. You'll find it's cheaper than making Whoopi. Eddie Cantor in the title song from his Broadway success, which travelled with Cantor to Hollywood. Fred and Adela Stare took London town in the early 20s in a musical comedy called Stop Flirting. They returned in 1926 to take the town again with the Gershwin's classic Lady Be Good. The score included a duet, which was a much-treasured 78 in the house where I stayed for my Bournemouth summers while still in knickers, the name we used for short trousers at that time. I remember that I played it almost through the felt on the turntable. Take a lesson from me. I'd rather try. The Astaire's, Fred and Adele, in the Gershwin duet they sang in Lady Be Good. Good Lord, it's 68 years, almost to the day, that we threw our hats in the air over the ending of the war in Europe. We had to pick them up again smartly. We didn't know that under the new post-war government there would be long years of rationing still ahead and that the full lights of London we missed so much wouldn't go up until April 1949. 
So the wee song I wrote at the time turned out to be a touch premature. Gordon Langford is at the piano. My misplaced expression of euphoria went like this. All around a melody is breaking. All about the sky is such a blue. Such a hurricane and no mistaking. Now it's through. There's that old familiar sunshine a flooding everywhere. There's that sleepy summer blossom perfuming all the air. There's that cabin on the hilltop a beckoning me there. Things are getting back to normal now. There's that rolling stretch of clover as far as I can see. There's that friendly little robin a singing just for me. And I cherish every leaf on that extra special tree. Things are getting back to normal. I've had my great adventure. I've been where dreams begin. But home is where they end up. This robot's clocking in. There's that nothing like it picture, the room I used to miss. There's that snug, inviting fireside. I've waited so for this. Then that smile I used to long for, that out of heaven kiss. Things are getting back to normal. great adventure I've been where dreams begin but home is where they end up this rover's clocking in there's that nothing like it picture the room I used to miss there's that snug inviting fireside I've waited so for this then that smile I used to long for that out of heaven Things are getting back to normal now. Things are getting back to normal now. A song from me to you. Thank you, Gordon. Bing Crosby went on the American Wireless Advertising Cheese had a harmony group called the Charioteers, who were nothing if not original in their approach to the popular song. Take their recording of Nobody's Sweetheart. Oh, well, you know nobody's sweetheart now. Don't baby you somehow. Fancy holes, silk and gown. Out of place in your own hometown When you walk down the avenue Strutting in fancy clothes I just can't believe that it's you Painted lips, painted eyes Wearing a bird of paradise Well, it all seems wrong somehow that you know nobody's sweetheart now. Well, you know nobody's sweetheart, sweetheart now. now. They don't, don't baby, baby you, you somehow. somehow. Fancy hose, silk and gown, you'd be out of place in your own hometown. When you walk, yes, walk right down the avenue, Fifth Avenue, oh, baby, I can't believe, I don't believe it's you, it can't be you. 
painted lips, lips painted, painted eyes, eyes painted, wearing a bird of paradise. Oh, it all seems wrong, somehow it all seems wrong, somehow that you're nobody's sweetheart now. Well, you can go right down to the river and drop your poor soul in. You can go right down to the river and drop your poor soul in. You can go right down to the river and drop right in. The charioteers. To close this penultimate meeting of the Friday Club, a favourite of yours and certainly of mine, the master in top cynical form. Now I'd like to sing you a new song that I wrote just last summer when I was having a holiday on the island of Capri. Each evening I used to sit on the piazza and watch these hordes of middle-aged ladies arriving by every boat, obviously all set to have themselves a ball. And so startled was I by this rather macabre spectacle <laughs> that I wrote this song about a respectable British matron who discovered in the nick of time that life was for living. <laughs> in a bar on the Piccola Marina, life called to Mrs. Wentworth Brewster. Fate beckoned her and introduced her into a rather queer, unfamiliar atmosphere. She just sit there, propping up the bar beside a fisherman who sang to a guitar. When accused of having gone too far, she merely cried, Funiculi, just fancy me, Funicula. <laughs> when he bellowed, Que bella signorina, sheer ecstasy at once produced a wild shriek from Mrs. Wentworth Brewster, changing her whole demeanor. When both her daughters and her son said, Please come home, Mama, she answered rather bibulously, Who do you think you are? Nobody can afford to be so loudy bloody dar in the bar on the Piccola Marina. Every fisherman cried, Viva, viva, and che ragazza, when she sat on the grand piazza, everybody would rise. Every fisherman sighed, Viva, viva, che bell inglese, someone even said, Whoops, a daisy, which was quite a surprise. Each evening, with some light excuse and beaming with goodwill, she'd just slip into something loose and totter down the hill to that bar on the Piccola Marina where love came to Mrs. Wentworth Brewster. Hot flushes of delight suffused her. Right round the bend she went, picture her astonishment. Day in, day out, she would get her back because she felt she was no longer on the shelf. Night out, night in, knocking back the gin, she cried, Hurrah, funicula, funiculi, funic yourself. <laughs> Just for fun, three young sailors from Messina bowed low to Mrs. Wentworth Brewster, said Scoozy, and abruptly, Gooster, then there was quite a scene. Her family in floods of tears cried, Leave these men, Mama. She said they're just high-spirited, like all Italians are. And most of them have a great deal more to offer than Papa in a bar on the Piccolo Marina. No old cards dripping delicious satire all over the desert in at Las Vegas to bring our last but one meeting to a close. We reconvene in a senite when Deo Valente, I hope to be in the square chair again to dispense nostalgia for the last time in this series. My thanks to the ineffable Roy Oakshot for Velvet Production. Until we re-meet, this is Hubert Gregg saying, harking back to the stairs, Fred had his work cut out to keep Adele's eye on the theatrical ball. They opened in New York in Funny Face in 27 
and were an instant success. On the second night, Adele arrived at the theatre both late and lit, having downed more than a wise number of social cocktails. Fred was furious and gave her a push, not to say a shove. A nip of smelling salts that would fell an ox and another shove onto the stage. I sang most of the song, he records, pulling her round on a toy wagon, so there was no serious trouble up to that point. But when we started to dance, oh, brother, or oh, sister, when they came off stage, he had to slap her face before she would go on to take a bow. When they came off again, she said, You hit me! Yes, said Fred, and bundled her into her dressing room to change. When she met him at their next entrance, she said again, You hit me! I had to, said Fred, by now beset with remorse. Forget it. I'll give you twenty bucks tomorrow. They scrambled through the evening, neither giving of their best. Fred apologized to his sister next day for having had to be cruel to be kind. Said Adele, where's my twenty bucks? She got them. Eventually, as we know, she married Lord Cavendish and retired to his castle in Ireland. Fred said... I was very glad. She didn't like to practice very much, and I was glad to see her do what she wanted to do. No more from me, Hubert Gregg, broadcasting on 88 and 91 FM, Wireless 2 from the BBC in London, England, but to say au revoir. To you. <laughs>